So today I'm going to be sharing with you our moving to King's Cross London area guide. King's Cross is a top North London area and it's home to tech giants such as Facebook and Google, just to name a few. Now this isn't a prime central London neighbourhood. Mayfair and the West End are around about 15 minutes away from here. And yet I'm going to be sharing with you exactly what makes King's Cross so special that has investors and home buyers and people renting from all around the world. So stay tuned. King's Cross has gone through some major transformation. I remember when it was just a large industrial zone, including a red light zone, and it used to be quite scary to even walk through there during the evening. Very different to what you find now, which is home to a lot of commercial space, cultural space, and residential people living in the area. And King's Cross belongs to the London Borough of Candles, which is a huge borough which has a lot to offer. It has a new postcode of N1C. To the north, you have Camden Town. To the south, you have Bloomsbury. To the west, West End, of course. And you've got the vibrant east, uh, Hoxton and Shoreditch to the east. And the area attracts American expats, Chinese expats, but in particular, Asian investors. It has a growing Chinese community. And in fact, there are quite a number of Chinese investors in the area. You'll find plenty of opportunities to connect with other Chinese residents from local cultural events and festivals to community groups and social clubs. So whether you're looking to buy a property or even rent a property, this will be the right place for you. And when it comes to transport in King's Cross, there aren't really many places that are gonna be able to compete because it really has everything. Multiple lines on the underground station, it has a multiple railway as well, well connected throughout all of London, but also different places of the country. The Eurostar as well, it whizzes you to different countries. You've got bicycles, it has good connections to different airports, pretty much everything, so it's the right place to be. Which is no wonder why young professional also likes to live in King's Cross. And if you're enjoying this King's Cross London area guide, give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out pushing more of these videos to people just like you. And of course, having such great connections all around London, it attracts a lot of tourists. But also not only because of the connection of transport, but also because it has so much cultural places and so much to do in King's Cross. And when it comes to food and drink in King's Cross, you're gonna be spoiled for choice. Not only because of the restaurants and the cafes and the coffee shops in the area, which are gonna be far too many for me to name in this video, but just the experience that you have out in King's Cross. For example, you've got the Canopy Market, which is a weekend market. Every Friday to Sunday, you can browse in a lineup of London's best artists and traders at this charming covered market just off Granary Square. But you also got the Caravan, well-traveled food and mighty fine coffee. Caravan was the very first restaurant to open in King's Cross and it's been popular since that day. Take a seat in the stripped back, industrial style dining room, or if the weather's fine, nice summer day, the terrace overlooking the Granary Square. And if you're more of a shopping person and eating and drinking, then you're gonna be pleased to know that King's Cross has more than 100 shops all across the Cold Drop Yard and also through the Boulevard. These are gonna include some independent shops as well as some chains. Some of these include 18 Montrose, Aesop, American Vintage, American 365, Earl of East, Qubit, just far too many to name here. And as much as I love sharing my experiences in London, let me know your views. What's your thoughts about King's Cross or any other places in London? Leave me a comment below. And you may be surprised to find out that King's Cross has a lot of things to do in the outside space. In fact, it's one of my favorite places to go, whether it's winter or summer. I love walking around the canal. Uh, I love dropping in just because I've got a sweet tooth, people who know me. Dropping in and getting some chocolate at Le Chocolate uh, Alain. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. So King's Cross has a lot to offer for the outside space. As I said, you can take a stroll along Regent's Canal. You've got Bagley Walk, which is a beautiful elevated park, which follows the curve around Regent's Canal. You've got Granary Square at the top of the boulevards. Always lovely to, to just even sit around or even walk around. Carmley Street, natural park. You have the Gas Holders Park, which is also fun. Uh, explore the wilder side of the city. I can share a resource, a map, which you can explore. And I promise you, along those walks in King's Cross, you're not going to be disappointed when it comes to architecture or history in the area, because it has plenty of that. In fact, the landmarks that are in the area, such as the famous St. Pancras Station, which has been beautifully restored and transformed into a modern hub for shopping, dining, and entertainment. So whether you're interested in Victorian architecture, modern design, or something in between, 
you'll find plenty to admire in King's Cross. And the fact that London has so many amazing neighbourhoods not only to live in, but also to invest, absolutely means you should hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our area guides. So this King's Cross London area guide now brings us to my favourite topic, which is property and what you get for your money. If we look at right move listings, it brings up 44 listings for sale at this moment in time. And it ranges anything from around about £700,000, which you get one bed flat, right up to around about £1.8 million. They're mostly going to be new builds. And I'm going to give you an example of a two bedroom property in the Plimsoll building, uh, which is an average of around about a million pounds, maybe slightly more. Two bedroom, two bathroom, all the amenities that you would expect. You have gym, you have parking, lifts, everything that you can expect. A concierge, porter, a bit of outside space. Now, this will set you back again around about a million pounds when it comes to sales. When it comes to rental, you're looking around about 3,500, 3,750 pounds. So if you're an investor, you're gonna expect around about 4% yield, which is pretty standard in London. The properties that are more on the upper side, a more premium will be something sort of like the gas holders. And this will set you back around about 1.8 million. In fact, the property more expensive on the listing will be a gas houses property. And if you're curious about more areas in the Camden Borough, make sure you check out our video in the best Camden neighborhood to live in. If there's anything we can help you with, anything Prime London, myself or my team, feel free to reach out to us because we are all experts in property.